Hi, happy holidays and welcome to this review of web browsing on the HP Slate 500 with the Internet Explorer 9 beta. I'm choosing the Internet Explorer 9 beta because I'm using it on my other machines now. I like it. It's pretty fast overall. It's faster than IE8. It doesn't support GPU acceleration on the uh, Slate 500 because it uses the Intel GMA integrated graphics so you don't get GPU acceleration and the performance of this device is pretty much like a typical netbook if you've ever web browsed on that you, you're going to get pretty much the uh, identical performance on this device so it's not going to be extremely fast but it's usable so I'm going to start it up I just simply tap the E icon if no instances of IE are running just like I would on a Windows 7 desktop and by default, uh, this device is a clean Windows install, so by default, MSN is the home page. I haven't changed that yet. Now, as you can see, the page loaded reasonably fast. Scrolling isn't super smooth, and you'll find that that's going to be the case on a lot of heavier sites with a lot of JavaScript and a lot of Flash. They're not going to be super fast. And, of course, once again, if you have Java, uh, excuse me, if you have Flash and Silverlight and other plugins in the browser, that's going to slow it down. Now, you can disable that stuff if you want to and make it more like an iPad or a mobile phone and that you don't bog it down with a lot of a lot of that stuff. And you can disable JavaScript. You could use Flash or you could use Firefox, for instance, and use no script or Chrome and use whatever optimizations and tools that you want to use to disable stuff like that. I obviously I like to have a full web browsing experience even though it might be a little slower on this device. Now one thing that to be aware of and one reason why I do like IE9 over other browsers is the biggest problem with web browsing on Windows 7 on a touch device is probably the pinch zoom effect. Now on a device such as a TM2 that has a much faster GPU and in fact it, my, G, my TM2 has a dedicated GPU and it has a much faster CPU, the effect is actually pretty good. On this device, it might take quite a few seconds. Now that one wasn't too bad. Sometimes it's quite a bit slower than that. But as you can see, it's quite laggy. So in IE9, there's a much better way to do it. You can use two finger tap. I'm just using two fingers and tapping around the area that I want to zoom in on and it's instant much much faster than using pinch zoom and like I said that's actually the primary reason why I like to use IE9 now I there might be ways to to do this in Firefox with extensions and in Chrome as well so I'm not familiar with that I know there's lots of ways to to customize those browsers and give them capabilities that they're not that are not built in but I, I like that uh, feature, especially it's, it's very handy on an Atom-based tablet like this device. So let's open up uh, a new tab. We simply tap the new tab icon at the top, just like a desktop. And this is going to work just like your desktop. It's just going to have a, obviously you're just going to be using a pen or a touch. Of course you can use a mouse and keyboard with the slate as well and basically turn it into a netbook if you prefer to do that. I'll bring up one site. Now this is a site that's kind of problematic. This is Engadget and this is a site that's just slow and I just want to show it to you because this will probably be what you would expect on the really bad end of web browsing on this device. So I always like to show people the bad stuff just so that they'll understand the weaknesses of things. Now another thing too is you'll notice that you do have to wait for the page to fully load before it becomes responsive. And as you can see, Engadget just is a little, it's not very responsive. Sometimes I can flick something and it might, it might not register or it might take a couple of seconds. See so, you now it's not registering right now. So I may have to wait for it to kind of catch up. And Engadget is just a very 
very heavy site even on a desktop browser. Now you can use of course the mobile version or the HD version and those are lighter versions of Engadget that do run a little better. But I just want to show you that because that's just going to give you not a great experience. But Engadget is the exception to the rule typically you get better performance. We'll go to like CNN here. Once again I just tap on the new tab icon and I get an I-9 gives me a little page preview of my recently viewed sites. So I can uh, pull this up. This is a little more responsive, quite a bit more responsive actually than Engadget. It, it'll never pick up and pause. It might might take a second or so to catch up, but it won't um, it won't get those annoying pauses like you would in on Gadget. And of course, the nice thing about Windows and using IE9 uh, or or desktop browser is the ability to play flash video. So I'm going to mute it. I'm just tapping the volume icon and hitting the mute button. And of course, you do have the ability, like I said, to you can disable this stuff. Uh, it will. A lot of people don't like Flash because it does slow things down, and you get a lot of ads through Flash. But there you have a Flash video playing. You can even zoom in on that while it's playing. Now the flash won't magnify just the HTML elements and as you can see when that happened things look a little strange. Now the other nice thing about this too is you have the ability to navigate using Flex. I was able to go back by stroking from left to right the other thing you might notice there too is that pages will not be responsive until they fully load so you're not like on an iPad or a mobile phone going to be able to start navigating the page until it fully loads so that's one thing that's different probably not something that most people would like but generally though you're not waiting nearly as long for pages to load now I'm gonna go and I'll pull up something that like a, a Vable Insight this is tabletpcreview.com which is a great site for tablet PC people great place to find out information on the Slate 500 you can see that this is a lighter site not a lot of flash or JavaScript in it and it scrolls pretty nicely and even pinch zoom works better on this laggy still but not nearly as slow as like MSN and two finger tap to zoom is quite responsive the other thing too that you can do with Penflix is that you can customize them so that for instance I've customized some and you can go to Penflix by simply if you type pin in the tablet input panel you can change pin and tablet settings and I believe it gets you to the flicks and when you go there you can customize so you have by default eight flicks back and forth as you can see are the defaults I've kept those I have customized a couple of them. For instance, I have, if you can see that, that's home and that's refresh. So, for instance, if I just take my finger and go from right to left diagonally, I can reload the page. So, that's a nice way without having to hit F5 or hit the little refresh icon there at the top to refresh a page. I also have a flick 
programmed to automatically take me to the top of a page. And that comes in handy. And I actually need to set one up on this to take me to the end of a page. I actually haven't gotten that customized yet on this device, but you can do that as well. So those are nice little enhancements and customizations that you can do. And those will work uh, in Firefox as well, or Chrome. They're not specific to IE9. And of course, the other thing too about IE9, and also Firefox supports this, is that you get your open browser windows in the thumbnail preview here, and you can navigate back and forth between various browsers by using the thumbnails, and it's actually quite finger friendly. Somewhat easier than hitting the tabs at the top sometimes. And also, if you want to close a browser window or a tab, you can do it from here as well by hitting the X. A little red X will just close the tab or the browser. And you can also close it with the tabs at the top by hitting the X on the tab. So there is a basic overview of how web browsing works on this device. Oh, one last thing I do want to show you is using the pen. I like using the pen. This is, of course, the reason why you would probably want the HP Slate is the pen. It gives you a very nice way to enter text. Quite responsive overall. And with one, with one hand, I find that using the pen is much nicer. I'm so used to using pens with tablet PCs. I just find it much preferable to just about any keyboard, on-screen keyboard on any device, in, the iPad included. It's just a very nice way to interact with this device, especially given its thinness. You can lay it flat on a table, its weight. It's just, it's just a, a very nice form factor to be able to write on and it's a great way to navigate sites you know post your comments and notes on Facebook or your various whatever whatever sites you like to hang out on so there you have it it's a basic netbook experience you're gonna have with web browsing on this of course you do have the touch screen and the pen interface which of course make it unique compared to a netbook Performance is going to be roughly the same. You have the ability to use whatever browser you want, i.e. Firefox, Chrome, even Opera. Though I haven't really tried Opera on this device. I have tried it on my TM2, and Opera does have reasonable touch interface. And you also have the ability to use Flash, and you can speed those uh, you can speed things up by disabling plugins like Flash if you find them annoying. And so you just have your basic desktop web browsing experience minus some speed but in a much smaller form factor and of course the ability to ink on it and use a pen so there you have it happy holidays